Hi everyone, welcome to Research Methods Week 10, where we're going to discuss quasi-experiments. So let's get started with that. Quasi-experiments mean like sort of or like not quite experiments. So in order to talk about those, we're going to start with reviewing stuff about what an experiment is and talk about which aspects quasi-experiments don't have and why we might conduct those and what kinds of conclusions we can still make even though they're not perfect experiments. So for this week, you need to read chapters 8 and 12 of your Schweigert textbook. 8 is about quasi-experiments and 12 is about single subject designs, which are very similar and I'm kind of lumping into this presentation. You also have two lab assignments due this week, and they are your last ones. You're going to write an outline of your introduction for your survey research paper and write a draft of your survey questions. Now, these are not the final draft of either, so don't worry. They're kind of the first rough draft you're going to turn in and get some feedback from me, and I'll give you more details at the end of the presentation. But to get started, let's review experiments. Uh, a true experiment, remember, has manipulation of an independent variable or even multiple independent variables. And what do we mean by manipulation? An experimenter has control over levels of a variable. We actively go in and adjust or mess with these levels instead of just measuring stuff that's naturally occurring. Equivalent groups, we, we compare equivalent groups, which means there are no confounding differences between our groups in the experimental conditions. They don't have any differences between the two groups before we begin. It doesn't mean equivalent in terms of how many people are in there, but they're equivalent in terms of characteristics. And we can assure equivalent groups through practices like random assignment, matching, and within subjects design. So please go back and re-watch any of the lectures as you need to to review these concepts. So quasi-experiments, as you can probably guess from that word, is a type of study that is not quite an experiment. It falls short on one or more of those criteria. So we only have partial control over an independent variable, or maybe participants were assigned to conditions by something other than random assignment. Why would we ever do a study like this if it's not good according to experimental standards? It sounds like it would be kind of lazy or something, right? Um, we can't figure out a causal relationship if we didn't manipulate an independent variable and, and assign our participants randomly to groups. But there are actually legitimate reasons why we would do these. Sometimes random assignment, manipulation of variables, those things may not be possible, practical, or ethical for us to do. So let's think of some examples. If we want to look at the effects of participant gender, are there differences between men and women and non-binary people on some dependent variable we're measuring, we cannot randomly assign people to be male or female or non-binary or anything. We can't manipulate their gender. We can manipulate hormones. At that point, that's not ethical to do, right? Here's another example of manipulation that we can't do. What if we wanted to look at the effects of having a seatbelt law, uh, does that actually make, you know, maybe reduce traffic fatalities? We can't manipulate that variable. We can't make a state have a seatbelt law or not, uh, or only apply that law to half of their people and randomly assign them to a seatbelt law condition or not. So we can't do that with an experiment. And here's another example where imagine you were interested in looking at the effects of saturated fat in somebody's diet on their likelihood of getting heart disease, not possible or maybe even ethical to manipulate. If you think that saturated fats are more likely to give somebody heart disease, that would be unethical to assign some of your participants to eat a whole bunch of them, right? And smoking studies, uh, similarly, if you want to causally establish the relationship between cigarette smoking and lung cancer, you can't assign some people to start being smokers if they weren't already. So there are good reasons we would do quasi experiments, but they do still have their drawbacks, right? They have limitations. Um, when we use non-random assignment, we're using people who are already smokers or already eat a bunch of saturated fat compared to the people who don't, or we use people who are already in their assigned categories, male or female or non-binary or what have you. We're increasing the risk of confounds being introduced into our study. These extraneous variables, we could have um, personality and environmental factors that could look like our treatment is working when there's actually no treatment effect. And, and by treatment, I mean our independent variable. In that case, we wouldn't be looking at the effects of the IV on the DV, but our independent variable plus a bunch of other stuff in combination would be what's affecting our dependent variable. And we wouldn't be sure what actually caused this change in our dependent variable. 
these confounds, remember, affect our internal validity of a study, meaning our ability to tell whether our DV change is due to our IV. So what do we do about it? 